new Rangers catcher Mitch Garver. Good morning, sir. Good morning from Surprise, Arizona, boys. <sighs> yeah, it's even earlier there for you, isn't it? I'm sorry for making you get up so early. No problem. I just got done with the workout, actually. You guys are uh, a little bit behind us. Uh, did you did you do the exact same thing? Did everybody do the exact same thing as yesterday? Can you guys average 25 runs yeah. a game this <laughs> <Yeah>. season? <laughs> I think both sides of the ball, it was getting a little crazy on offense there. The wind was howling out, and the sun was way high up in, in the high sky, and it was uh, – it was quite a showing there for the offense. I saw some of the folks in the Guardians dugout yawning during the game. Is it oh, difficult no. to keep keep focus in a spring training game where you're winning by upwards of 15 to 17 runs? Um, I mean, if that's your mentality, then yeah, I'm sure it's easy to lose focus. Um, we we make a point to make sure that we're pedal to the metal the whole time, um, even when the. Even when the uh, backup players came into the game, we wanted to make sure that you know that we had that same intensity that we started the game with, and that goes for every day. You know, we don't really want to get into a lull uh, state and uh, kind of take things for granted and, and let the game roll away from us. So that's something that we're trying to preach to to the younger kids, and they saw that yesterday. What would you think about my controversial rule that at some point you should be able to bank some of those runs and use them in future games? <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of want it to, right? Like, that would be a really fun thing there. So, uh, it, what's like, what point in catching a game in spring training do you say, okay, uh, I've, I think I've gotten my reps in for the day? Like, is there a, does, does Woody come to you and say, all right, you're done? Or is it more of like, hey, you know, I'm good today? Well, we, we kind of set out a plan um, as spring training goes along. Yesterday was going to be four innings. Next start will be five, and then we'll work up to six, seven, and then uh, hopefully you know get eight innings in, in a game before the season starts. But it's all part of a plan. We're sticking to the plan, and, and as long as we catch 50 to, to 60 innings in spring training, I should be ready for the season. So we have future uh, 2022 Silver Slugger Award winner Woo! Mitch Garver with us right now. Mitch, what is the plan with the Texas Rangers on catching slash DHing slash possibly playing first base this year? Uh, I'm not sure. We have, we haven't talked specifics on playing time or um, where I'll be playing or what I'll be playing. Um, the most important thing is just really getting in shape because of the shortened spring training. It's uh, it's going to be a challenge anyways for guys to get enough at bats and get on their feet enough and kind of work out some of those early kinks that that come along with the season. Um, so really we're just focused on being healthy in the game. We'll take it as we see it. Um, my plan is to catch a lot. I want to be in the offense. I want to help the team. I want to, you know, make an impact for this, for the staff. Um, but those are some of my early priorities. Mitch, we knew that there was a possibility of Isaiah Kiner Falefa getting traded after the lockout because of the signings of Seeger and Simeon from your part of the uh, trade. Did you have an idea that when the lockout ended that maybe Minnesota was going in another direction? Uh, I had a hunch. You know, there, there was some writing on the wall that I was able to read. We have a really young um, starting catcher in Jeffers who's going to be very talented and, uh, you know, he's going to have a great career ahead of him. He's got a lot more years of team control under his belt. Uh, it's just one of those things where you understand the business side of baseball. Um, I honestly thought I was going to get traded for some pitching. I didn't think I was going to get traded for um, a gold glove shortstop. But, um, you know, the way it worked out is, is funny. But I'm happy to be here, and, and my family's happy to be here, and we're excited. Mitch Garver joining us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. And like myself, my co-host, Kevin, we've been Rangers fans our entire life. Mike Bassick was a Rangers fan until he got his opportunity to pitch for the Texas Rangers. Uh, so, like, we, we're very invested in what they're doing. I'm just kind of curious from an outsider's perspective, what was your thought? What was your perspective on this club? Last year was tough. Uh, it was a very tough season for, for fans and for, I know, for the, a lot of the players. But, you know, up there in Minnesota, when you were looking down at Texas, what were you, what were you thinking about this club? Um, well, I... First of all, I've been in that situation before. Um, in 2018, we, we didn't have our greatest showing. We had um, a good amount of promise going into the season. We did not show well. Everybody got traded at the deadline, and basically the, the whole year was a disappointment. And we followed that up by winning the division in 2019. Um, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of emotions and a lot of fire that comes from a losing season, taking it into the next season. Hopefully we can carry that. Um, but I, I just remember playing the Rangers and thinking how dangerous they were. 
very aggressive team. Um, you know, they're they're aggressive on the bases, they're aggressive in the box, um, and that's the team we're trying to be. We're trying to catch other teams by surprise and be that that uh, dangerous team that nobody's talking about. We. I really love getting the inside of the players, and we asked Woody about this, quite frankly, when spring training was getting started. What were what was your mentality over the last couple of months throughout the lockout? And, like, did you keep track of the news every single day? Did you ever take a step back because it was frustrating? Like, how, how did you deal with all of that? Uh, well, I was the assistant rep with the Twins, so I was very involved in the conversations that were happening uh, going over the CBA um, Taylor Rogers was our head rep, and you know we were in constant conversation um, about things that were going on, um, being in contact with the teammates, making sure they understand uh, what position we hold as players, and you know taking our side and, and making sure that our voice is heard. Um, but yeah, there were there were times when it got frustrating. There were times when you know you wanted to to lash out a little bit and, and let everybody know how frustrated you were, but. Um, I think we as players held our ground pretty well, and we got a fair deal. Did, was there any part of you that ever felt obligation for the players that came from before you? Because Mike, who Corey referenced, used to pitch in Major League Baseball. His dad pitched in Major League Baseball. He talked about kind of like the players before him stood up for themselves. D do you ever feel that sense of obligation while y'all were going along? Yeah, and I think we did that. You know, we stood up for ourselves, and we're we're standing up for the future generations, and I hope – you know, some of these younger players that are not quite on the roster yet or, or still working on, you know, working their way up from the low minors, um, we did this for them. Um, I hope we, they understand that, you know, the way that inflation is going and, and the way uh, the game is going, that we're, we still have the young players' interest best, uh, best interest in mind. And uh, that was kind of the whole goal of this year's CBA. As a former player, Mitch, I'm very proud of you guys. I thought you guys did a tremendous job to get back on the field and get a great uh, deal for you guys. Now, when it comes to the top 10 right now on MLB Network, I love watching that program kind of on a nightly basis right now. Do you know where you rank in the top 10 catchers right now, according to MLB Network? Uh, no, I do not. All right, I think somebody tweeted at me, but I haven't paid attention to it. He's too you, humble, Mike. Here you, comes. Mitch, you are the sixth best catcher right now in Major League oh. Baseball. The year before, they had you ninth, so you moved up three spots. Nice. Do you feel good about that, or do you feel like they really did you wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's whatever. I think it's a uh, it's kind of a conversation where everybody has their own input on it. So. You could argue that anybody could be the best catcher in the game, but how do you really put statistics on that? When you were coming up playing baseball in high school, who were maybe uh, some of the players or catchers that you loved and wanted to be like? Um, so when I, got, I used to be a Boston fan. I loved watching uh, Jason Veritek catch, and I loved Boston team, but they were so exciting when they won the World Series in 04 and 07. So I ended up going up to Boston for uh, kind of my senior trip coming out of high school. We watched a few games, got to check out Fenway. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so obviously Jason Veritek's very cool. When I went to uh, – I played in the Northwoods League in college. It's a wood bat league up in Minnesota. I went to go see a Twins game, and I sat up at the very, very top of the stadium, up in the nosebleeds. And uh, I watched Joe Maurer play that game, and I thought, you know, that's pretty cool. And then, lo and behold – like eight years later, I got to play with him. Uh, it was just a pretty surreal moment. Was it? Would you learn from him? What was the the one thing that you were like? I have to learn this from you. <sighs> Joe is just so talented, man. That like he, it's hard for him to like talk baseball because he just he's so talented. He just does things naturally. Um, but he, he's a very calm presence, and I think that's one thing I can take away from him. The, uh, now, we do have FC Dallas here also. And I know you're a soccer stud as well. Is there any chance you can go help that team out as well? Or is this how are we doing this? I would love to. I would love to go out to a game. I'm, uh, I'm a big soccer fan. Um, I support the uh, New Mexico United back home in mm -hmm. Albuquerque. Uh, they're in the USL. But FC Dallas, man, I'm, I'm going to come out to a game and I'm going to have to get a kit with my name on it. Is it is it true that we there help were with that, dude. yeah we can we have a really good relationship with them is it true that there were rumblings and thoughts of you going to play in Europe in high school? 
Yeah, yeah, there were. Uh, when I was when I was in high school, I was I had grown into a pretty good player actually, and uh, we had a European coach for my junior and senior year, and he actually offered me a pretty much full scholarship ride to go over to Europe and kind of participate in the Premier League uh, development program. Um, it was kind of a huge uh, decision for me to make. And uh, I ended up choosing baseball because I just I thought I would had a better future in baseball, and I love the sport, and um, I honestly hated running. <laughs> so <laughs> soccer was like it was exhausting if you weren't in shape. But yeah, I did have the opportunity to go do that. And multi sport athlete uh, Mitch Barber <laughs> join us here on the KNC Masterpiece on one hundred five three. The fans quit soccer the same reason I did. I hated running as sure, well. Sure, I now, get it. Now, Mitch, the uh, all right. So like. Up until 2004, we had RAR and Sons around here. And then, like in 2019, 17 new local breweries, craft breweries, popped up around here. And I know I know a lot of the brewers and everything. They're fantastic people. But you also have Garve Sauce uh, up there in, in Minnesota, right? With, uh, with Omni Brewing. And I, I checked that out just a little bit. It looks like a, a great beer. Do you need to find a local brewer in the DFW area to come up with Garve Sauce 2.0? Oh wow! I uh, I think that would be a great opportunity, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so. It's almost like we have to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is do yeah. you are you a beer guy, or did they just present this to you? Did you have any thoughts on it, like what you wanted it to taste like, or anything? I am a beer guy. I love craft beer. I love uh, trying new things. Um, I, I met up with these guys in 2019 at the end of the year there. And, uh, you know, they're like, hey, we, we want to do a collaboration. And I was like, great, let's let's get it going. Um, we wanted something, you know, a nice summer beer, a light Mexican lager. It's delicious when it's cold. And, man, uh, they, they've done a lot for me. So we were able to get their, uh, that beer in the stadium, and it's sold up there in Minnesota. So Nice. I would love to link up with a brewery in, in Dallas and get something going. All right, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna shoot you a few names on Twitter. Uh, just keep an eye out. There'll be some names on the okay. on the way to you, man. Okay. Is is I was reading an old article on Twin Cities. Is it true that Garv Sauce it ended up coming from you and your friends used to say Cool Sauce in <laughs> high school? Is there any truth to that? <laughs> that is that is true. Yeah, I was. Well, that's how it started. You know how high schoolers are. Sure. Sure. In their ways. Um, sure. Yeah, we did all that, and then, yeah, it turned into garb sauce. One of my buddies called me garb sauce, and so. Don't let it, it be said that we don't do our research, Mitch. <laughs> I just want you to know that. I need to know these sources. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pretty good at this. We 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 kind of make sure we know what's going on just a little bit, though. All right, so we might set you up with uh-huh. a reboot of your beer. With We're going to get Dallas. you set up with yep. FC Dallas, and we learned about your secrets from high school. Yeah. So that's everything we yeah. provided for you and, today. And just remember, Mitch, the Maverick season was going bad four years ago, and Mark Cuban tried to put Tony Romo in a basketball game in the NBA. So maybe we could even get you in live action for an FC Dallas game. <laughs> I gotta say, so far Texas is taking really good care of me. Good, good. You guys got all my info, and you're trying to get me beer. I mean, what else could there be? Well, love it. I love it, man. Just do well for the Rangers, and we'll consider it far more than <laughs> even, man. Thank you very okay. much for your time this morning. We look forward to talking with you anytime. All right, guys. Thanks for call.